During the 60s, my work started out as printmaking. My prints were about my children, my family, and so forth. What changed that was the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King. And I felt such an anger and such an outrage that I wanted to express it. I was in a flea market and I found a plaque of an Aunt Jemima, a mammy, and I transformed that piece, which I called the liberation of Aunt Jemima. The notepad became a photograph of a black woman holding a mulatto child. And instead of a pencil, I put a rifle. Unknowingly, that became the way I made art, of finding something and changing the function by making it art. My work began to focus more on the African-American community and its history. During that period of time, artists began to make their work more militant, more about black people, more about black concerns. And that was how I was involved with the black movement. I still am inspired by things that I find and what's the story that I'm going to tell next. Usually it comes from the materials. And I don't say to myself, oh, I'm going to do this and that'll say that. Definition of what I made always comes afterwards. It's just the process of putting things together to express how I feel about something. And in a way, as an artist, I feel that I'm a warrior too, in my own way, of taking discards, of taking things that are thrown away, putting them together, which may or may not change the way people think about them. The Tate Museum decided to select an installation that I had, which was inspired by my first public museum opening at California State University in Los Angeles. I know there were probably some times where I'd been discriminated against because I was a black woman artist, but I think because I was a recycler, a junkie, so to speak, <laughs> that my work had a different feeling and a curiosity that people wondered about it. It's what I love to do, and I think it's part of what keeps me sort of ageless, you know, because part of my creative person is always creating something.